such a key component of what you're doing. But the reality is people need access to this information. You know, uh, just from some of the testimonials that you've heard already, it's helped change people's opportunity, whether you use trading as a vehicle for your success or whether you're like myself, who simply concentrates on the actual application of the charts, all right? Whether it's indices, commodities, things like gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, all techniques are applicable across multiple different uh, entities that you want to trade and work with. A little bit about myself, I thank you for the um, kind of introduction there. I was kind of brought into the company just over a year ago now. So I haven't been brought through the system. I've worked alongside big institutions in London, in different kind of social retail, uh, retail type trading environments. I've worked in stock brokerage firms. I've done a lot of the corporate side of things. And what I always felt was unfair, let's say, was the fact that we were charging anywhere between five to 10 grand for three days of our time. And then there wasn't really anything beyond that. Whereas the community and the access to platforms, products, support groups, whatever you have within this organization is incredible. You apply the mindset to that as well, and you just kind of start leveling up very, very quickly. Um, I'm officially a part of a product called Steady, and the co-founder and creator of it. And what we do is we concentrate very much so on the kind of swing trading type element. Now, for many of you who might have heard a little bit about trading, or have heard about scalping and, and really short term type time frames, that's absolutely fine. And we still introduce that into the trading sphere that we work with on live trading events at very specific times of the day on Steady. But what I really concentrate on is something called risk to reward. Okay, it might sound simplistic to you guys that have just jumped on the call, but the reality is anyone can actually become successful in trading if you just start to manage money in an appropriate way. We have seven, eight different elements that we like to look at when we start introducing this to you to the market, okay? I'm not gonna go through all of them today. I've tried to refine my kind of presentation to actually make it a little bit more well-rounded for newcomers and for guys that are looking to kind of obviously take uh, another leap in their own education. That's what Steady's for. We concentrate very, very much so. I've created a complete Kickstarter course series for you to kind of join us. We're live, uh, I think over 16 sessions in a week. So there's you know, never a day where you're not uh, without us, both in English and Spanish. So you can kind of jump over there. But if I just share my screen quickly, because what I want to do today, I want to kind of implement a few ideas of how we can approach the market, even from just this call. I think it's really, really important that alongside the business side of things, you start found, uh, having a groundwork and a foundation that you can come to the charts on an every single day basis and have a plan of, right, I know where I am in the market. I know where things might be able to get to in the market. And then you can dive a little bit deeper and refine, obviously, those executions. Because unlike most people, we trade slightly differently. All right, there's a lot of access to information out there. And the way I like to put it is that most people in the industry are drinking from the same water, but the water's tainted, right? And if you actually flip reverse of the whole psychology of the market, you'll start to see things in a slightly different way. And that's what I want to start introducing you today. Okay, so I'm just going to open up this and let you see hopefully my screen. Everybody should see my screen. Okay, I'm going to flip between the PowerPoint and I'm going to flip between obviously the chart so we can find obviously application, we can find the education side of things, we can find examples, and then we can move forward with hopefully you guys utilizing the information for yourself. I think it's really, really important as educators that we don't just sit here and try to blow people away with information because that gets daunting. The same for you guys looking to market the business and build the business. Don't blow people away. It's about actually refining information to a point that they can understand it and then duplicate it and find success for themselves. I by no means am no PowerPoint fiend, but I just thought I'd, uh, I'd build something quickly before this call. So if we build this up, like I said, I'm a part of the, the, the product or the platform on one of the products on the platform called Steady. Uh, with a couple of business partners that we work with. But I'm not here to really talk about steady. I'm here to talk about the techniques that we can utilize when we're looking at trading in the market. Now, in terms of a blueprint, right? If you haven't got a uh, pen and paper just yet, or if you've got your iPad, or if you've got something to kind of at least go back and forth from the chart to maybe even just trading view to some notepads, I really would recommend it. Okay. Now, in terms of like I've talked about, we have seven or eight different elements that we really look to utilize and we teach. And I won't be able to explain everything on, in, within 30 minutes or 45 minutes, however long I've got. 
But the most important thing, and I think sometimes we miss this, especially if we're just concentrating on one technique, one confluence, one idea that the market has to do something, is we have to understand the narrative of trend, right? We have to define the directional bias of the overriding trend, and then we can start to follow that simply. I have a huge saying that I say day in, day out on my call, that it is 80% continuation, 20% reversal. So the majority of your time, more than the majority of your time, we are looking for continuations. And I promise you, you are going to be far more successful to write, uh, looking for continuations over and above trying to be pick a top or trying to pick a bottom. I know that there's probably a lot of intermediate traders that have been in this for a year, picked up techniques, uh, cut the learning curve and have put themselves quite far ahead. But you're finding yourselves picking a top and a bottom on a consistent basis and then it never becomes the top or the bottom. Like I mentioned, we don't have to be the first of the party to prosper because once we've been given directional movement, we can then scale back into that and then utilize different techniques to obviously scale in. So once we've defined a narrative, we've really got to uh, understand, and it's my belief massively, that we have to understand, not to necessarily find an entry, but we have to understand what the candlesticks, what the first thing you open up your MetaTrader, the first thing you open up your, your analytical trading view, the first thing you open up a product on the platform, what you see are candlesticks. And our understanding of that, and the way I like to define it, is that they are the language of the market. The same way if you were trying to learn French or learn Spanish, or if you were uh, deaf and you had to learn how to sign language. If you can understand what the proportion of wick to body, where something is in relationship to can, uh, like into pricing, you can start to really refine what the market's trying to tell you and then scale that thing back down. So step three, we look at kind of identifying where price is being drawn to so important about why should something go to a certain level and we're going to find lots of examples together but why should something get drawn to that or what is the probability that the market wants to achieve that level or wants to achieve a certain range so once we've dictated the market direction once we've dictated what the candlestick and the language is trying to uh, tell us we then have directions and targets and stops and things like that that we can get moving into Step four, we obviously maybe want to execute in optimal times when volume is increased. Probably one of the most underestimated pieces of information right there. We have particular sessions throughout a 24 hour window, five, five and a half days of the week, right? From Sunday night till Friday night, especially here in the UK. Those are our kind of our times. But within that, we have very specified sessions where there is an increase of volume or there is an increase of liquidity for us to actually find optimal areas where the majority of the time we're going to find the high or low. And therefore, we won't have to sit in drawdown and we can protect ourselves as quickly as possible. You never want to turn a winning trade into a losing trade. We've got to understand our risk to reward profiling. And like I mentioned, swing trading for some people is that you're holding something for a huge extended period of time. What I really promote is that you start to understand yourself and then you start to understand how you want to trade. Some people want to be at the market every single second of the day. I don't promote it, but some people do. I personally don't want to sit in front of a screen, but I equally don't want to sit in a trade for three to four weeks at a time. So we've refined what we do and what we classify swing trading as is risk to reward. Whereas many other platforms might give you a 20 pip stop for a 20 pip target, boom, 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 TP, shout and scream. That's not my vibe. I don't need that in my life. What I want is to set and forget and allow the market to multiply my money in the background. And we often look for one to three as an absolute break even type minimum. Okay. We're often trading at one to five, sixes, sevens, one to tens, one to twelves, one to twenties. If you just allow price to kind of do what it needs to do and understand what we're actually trying to teach you here. Finally, it's more important about where the market is than necessarily what the market is showing you or doing. The market's hugely manipulative. There's a lot of information out there that if you understand or if you are taught from a retail type perspective or you're taught from the majority of uh, traders out there, you will see the same type of thing recycled in a different format that essentially is programming you to lose. And so what we like to do is counter that 
thought process. Counter the idea that 90% are losing. So how about we go and do the opposite to what the majority of people are taught? And this is how we start building almost uh, a kind of strategies behind it. And we start building the better understanding. And all of that helps us create that narrative for a higher time frame bias. So as we scale down into all of this, oh, sorry, let me come back into this. All right, define the narrative. Okay, so step one, we're looking at kind of defining the narrative. If you're writing something down, this is what we're trying to go. Every time you come to the market, maybe it's your Sunday, maybe it's a Monday, whenever you like to come to the market, even if it's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we've got to understand where is the market trying to get to. And it's important that we are established where we are in certain market conditions. And the best way and the easiest way to do that is simply from understanding what type of trend are we moving in. We should be aware that the market goes up, the market goes down, the market kind of goes sideways, or the market is off sometimes in a period where we might spike and then fully reverse. So understanding where we are in terms of a narrative is so important. And your expectation for that day, for that week, whether it's short term, medium term or long term, is really, really important moving forward. All right. So if we just show a quick example on, uh, on a simple chart over here, I'm just going to move this. I'm going to do it on a, on a fairly blank chart here. Okay, so step one, defining the narrative of the trend. Now, like I mentioned, I don't have all the time in the world because this is something that we used to do either over a three, four day period, eight, nine hours a day, or I've got a step-by-step -step process that will take you 30 days to complete, and then you will hopefully be on a fast track route to success using our platform to become self-sufficient. I think that's what separates us from other platforms is that we, are, my whole goal here is that you become self-sufficient. Why? Because then that helps you build within the business that then helps your pockets even more. You're making money from this. You're then profiting from other ways within the business as well. Multiple streams of income is so, so important, not only just for the mental uh, clarity of trading, but just your peace of mind that if something wasn't quite going right here, you've then got the opportunity to progress over there. So step one, we're looking at the narrative of the trend. And we can often do that by simply obviously doing what we believe is a direction. When we are moving to the upside, the market is consistently making swings. It's what we classify as swing movements. The market moves up, it creates what we class as a high, the market pulls back. Now, if we are looking for a bullish type market condition. If we're looking to buy something on continuations, we often want to buy when others are fearful and we want to sell when others are greedy. Another good way of putting it is once the mainstream media start talking about something, eesh, that's probably time you want to step back out and reevaluate. All right. So just simple market directions. When we're in an uptrend, we are creating these significant highs and lows. When we are in a downtrend, we are creating lower lows and lower highs. And it's upon those pullbacks that we look to re-enter at the high point to then sell this thing back off into a new trending low. The third phase is often when you're stuck in consolidation. For us to be able to establish a trending direction, you have to be able to have two points of swing. And what do I mean by that? Well, this would be classified as one to two points of swing. Why? Because this created a high we pulled back, we failed to go below the previous higher low. That is why this one is a higher low point. As market rallies itself up and creates the new higher high point, often that third swing point is gonna be your highest probability of execution when we're looking at market conditions. Okay, it's the same way that when we're looking in bearish conditions, the same way that we're looking in bullish conditions. If the market starts to push sideways, we create significant or relative equal highs or lows, you've got to understand that there is liquidity. And if you are new to the call, what I classify as liquidity is money. The market is consistently trying to grab money either side of where buyers and sellers potentially have their stop losses in place. So ranges are something that we maybe want to step away from or really only want to target once you see some form of manipulation occur. But essentially, the market, every single move began from some period of consolidation. 
every single move began from some period of consolidation because that is where buyers and sellers are starting to equal each other out and then one starts to dominate its order flow and grow in that specific order. Likewise, the other directional bias of investors are starting to put out their profits or pull out of their positions. And then we overtake them and we go from supply into demand. All right, so step one, very, very simply, we go through obviously multiple different phases there, defining the narrative. Where are we in a trend? Are we in the middle of a trend? Probably don't wanna be in that. We wanna be attacking it at a low point. We want to be attacking the market at a high point and just very very simply so we get a visual representation of what we're talking about here this is what we classify as an uptrend we've got kind of low points we then push higher we then got higher low we got higher high we got higher low we got higher high we got higher low higher high higher low so on and so forth and we can see that every time the market pushes itself up we want to get back in on the market once we we want to take the market conditions as it pushes up and pulls back then this is an opportunity for us to buy in to go into a new higher high type situation so narrative of trend where are you in relationship to a trending structure are we at the top of a trend are we at the bottom of a trend very very important to establish where you are so you don't get stuck in something that you don't need to be involved in all right and we can see on euro as an example right now market pushed higher pulled back has now gone higher again so what could we be thinking just from that explanation there most basic information we could potentially be looking at maybe pulling back over the next few days or weeks on euro usd so that's step one step two i've understood where i am across multiple different time frames from the weekly and the daily to the four hour to get my wave structure. I'm now looking at multi time frame analysis. And if you are new to this, I mentioned that you've got multiple different time frames up here. And it's so, so important that you do look across from a monthly time frame to a weekly time frame to a daily time frame, four hour, all the way down, potentially even to a five minute, three minute, one minute type time frame. <clears throat> Something that you might not be familiar with is that price knows no time price the candlesticks that you see is just a visual representation of order flow it's a visual representation of buyers and sellers coming and going in the market and everything that you do is fractal so what does that mean is something that applies to a monthly time frame can be applicable to the one minute time frame once you understand what you're looking for and the reason i say that is because the market is consistently being delivered in a very systematic way. And that's what we like to teach you over on Steady, is that the market's being delivered the same way, in the same processes, in the same manipulation. And if you start to understand how and why and what to look for, you will start to find yourself really prospering from firstly, picking the direction of the market. Where are we? What direction is the overall bias heading in? Step two. I'm flicking through multiple time frames. I'm beginning to build an understanding of what these candlesticks start to mean to me. Okay. So every single one of these candlesticks potentially has some kind of meaning behind it. And it's super important that we start to utilize a couple of them. We don't need to understand every single one of them, but where something is, is so much more important than necessarily what it is delivering. So if you're at the top of a trend, and we can see here that blue for me represents bullish pressure, buying pressure, black represents selling pressure. We can see just simply this is on a daily time frame from the opening of this candlestick, this black candlestick to the low of this black candlestick, it took out the previous two days of price. But the importance of that is where the market did it. Well, for us, we're at the top of this very overly extended trend and have a lot of area to potentially rebalance the market in. So that's your first real indication. And that's what I mean by the language of the market. I'm not trying to enter right here just because I've seen that candlestick close. By all means, you could, but that's not how we do it. We really refine stop losses to anywhere between 15 to 20 to maybe 25 pips but we extend for 100 to 200 to 300 type pips. And that then begins to give you those huge risk to rewards, which in essence, you would have to then lose another 20 trades 
just to be back at break even. And I'm going to show you a few examples moving forward. So step one, we've identified the trend. Just looking at this, we've created significant highs. We've pulled back. We've created a new high. So what would we expect now? We could be looking for the pullback. Step two, we start looking at types of candlesticks. We start looking at the size and shape of the price action. We can see that obviously this black candlestick in here has entirely engulfed the previous two days. It's ran itself above an old high, which is very important. And it's managed to close back within this somewhat consolidation type range that you can see in here. So it's a sign, it's a signal. And like I mentioned, there's about 10 or 12 different type of candlestick formations, variations that we look for to give us the early warning signs that price is either beginning to slow down or it's beginning to reverse. Does that mean we find them for entries? No. We allow price to play out and then scale down to refine. Okay, we refine on a consistent basis. So step three, all right, we're looking at identifying where price is, reaching or being drawn towards. Very, very important. Why is price reaching for a certain level? Why would price want to go above an old high? Why would price want to go and sweep what we classify as lows? Looking at this chart once more, I'm going to build the, the whole essence of it. Step one. I've come to the chart. I can see that over a period of time, market's gone up, pulled back. It's gone up again. Step two, from what we've just talked about, we can see that we have a particular candlestick that is indicating that there is selling pressure available at the top of a market. Step three, where is the market being drawn to? Okay, step three, where is the market dream, uh, being drawn to? Now, I'm going to really simplify the entire market for you. The market is only trying to do two things, okay? It doesn't matter who you've spoken to, who knows anything about trading, it's only trying to do two things. Doesn't matter what strategy you use, doesn't matter what, what indicators you use, who teaches you, in essence, everything surrounding what they're te teaching you is these two things. The market is either looking for what I classify as seek and destroy, okay? reaching for liquidity or it's looking to rebalance itself that is the only two things no matter what strategy what platform what product what teacher what educator what guru no matter what you're doing that is the only two things the market's trying to do it's either trying to reach for liquidity e.g money where is the best place for money to be found below old lows, above old highs. Write that down. Where is the best place for money to be found? Above old highs and below old lows. So that is how we can start to really determine, not support and resistance levels, and I'm not dissing them, but it's just, it's a slight fabrication of what you determine as support and resistance is rather than what the market is actually determining what support and resistance is, if, if you think about it. But what we can to take from the market is highs, lows, an area that has consistently caused difficulty at a certain price point is what we class as a buildup of liquidity, a buildup of orders, a buildup of money has been introduced to the market at a certain point, and we should be aware that we're in a very manipulative market. So if most people are looking to buy at that level that's been rejected two or three times, the likelihood is, if I shift your thinking, is that the market wants to actually drive through that, take everybody's money, and then probably go. So let's just do an example. So if we're looking at, remember, we're on step three here, or step four, then find where price is reaching or being drawn towards. Rebalancing, seek and destroy. We're understanding the formation of liquidity. Where is the best place for liquidity to be found? Well, let's just drop this time frame down. Unlike information you might be aware of, things like double tops and double bottoms or singular wick lows or singular wick highs or maybe even triple tops or triple bottoms. If this is all new to you, fantastic. You are learning what you need to learn at the right time. If this is 
not new to you. Let me shift your paradigm. Let me shift your thinking and show you things that you might not have been aware of. The market will often look to build resistance zones. It's hit this level once, it's hit this again, it's definitely gonna hit this level and drop. But what does price do? It drives through it and then drops lower. The same way that we could be looking at price now, creating this range of price from one low, it's rejected once, it's rejected twice, it's rejected a third time. Oh, the market must support this level because it's done it three or four times. The majority of the time, what we will see is price wants to go and attack this low. It wants to go and attack this low, sweep liquidity. That's how we classify it, sweeping liquidity. What does that mean? It means taking the money from all the buyers that were involved in the market here, here, and in here. And then we might see the market pop back up and close in the range. But understanding where we are in the market, are we creating a high? Are we creating a low? What is the candlesticks trying to tell me the directional bias of where we're trying to get to? Step two. Step three, identifying the, um, the liquidity points. Well, in this current situation on Euro USD, the current draw on liquidity is to run lower because we've already ran the liquidity above here. Let's even put a dollar sign here. Money, we've already ran the money here. Where's the next best place to grab money from the market? Below over here. So now we're starting to set up our overall trend for the week, right? We've pushed ourselves into a higher high. What do we expect after a higher high? A higher low. Where can that higher low formulate? Well, looking at the price action, we've been given a signal of bearish intent. Step three, where is the liquidity being processed? Well, below this level seems very attractive for EURUSD to want to go and grab all that money below that. Step four, all right, time and price, working within a dealing range. Like I mentioned, probably one of the most misunderstood pieces of information. It's something that I trade on a day-to-day -day basis from intraday perspectives, 50, 60 pip targets, all the way through to obviously an entire two weeks, three weeks, four weeks type uh, precision. But the market is being delivered day in, day out in a very similar format. Okay. First of all, we look at the weekly concept of trend. And if you've got a notepad, often you are not going to create the high or low. This is a not. You are not going to create the high or low on a Monday. The probability, all you've got to do is go back test this. If anyone puts in the effort, you will likely see it. You've dictated a trend. You will often find the trend of a week is created either on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Our highest probability setups are when they are created and printed on a Tuesday, New York session time. We will often find if we're intraday trading, 70% of the time, so three out of five, potentially four out of five, if it's a good week, we will find that the high or low of the trading day can be created during a London session. And the sneaky thing about London and this is probably the biggest breakthrough I ever had in trading was figuring out that ju often during London, we want to see the market go the opposite way to the overriding trending bias. And what do I mean by that? So we can see that the overriding trending bias right now is I want to come and draw liquidity on these lows. So what would I like to see during my month? Uh, if I want to head down here, when I approach my London session, which is between 7 to 10 a.m. during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm now going to be looking for opportunities for the market to spike against my bias. So my direction is that I'm gonna try to take out these lows here. So what I want to see, because I have to create a high within the market day, I have to create a high within the market week. It's just generic information that nobody really picks up on. My biggest breakthrough was identifying particularly the Asian range, the high and low of Asian range play, breaking that range play, and then going the directional bias that we're favoring during the New York session. 
And it's something that I'm not going to show here because it's my absolute dynamite that we have over on Steady. But I just wanted to imp implement that for you. Once you start picking out what the Asian session, the London session and the New York session can do for you and the, the, the geometry that the market trades in, again, three out of five, four out of five days, you can really start to refine the type of entries that you're looking for because you're not just trying to enter here. You're not just trying to enter here. And remember, if you're on different platforms and you're only picking up 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, 20 pips, it's an entirely different perspective. What we're looking for is having very refined stop losses, but actually targeting the entire swing of the week, letting money become an investment for you. You're not gambling anymore because you're letting money invest for yourself. Day by day, you could be looking at yourself profiting from holding something for three days. You could be returning 2% a day from just the market continuing itself to the downside or to the upside. And finally, something that is super important to understand what we like to do over on the steady is your risk to reward type profiling. Okay. So often within the market, this red zone down in here, in here, and in here represents the percent of the account or the amount of pips that you're prepared to lose on your account. The green represents the profit potential that you would look to be making. So I strongly promote that you work between one and 3%. And for some of you thinking, I'll have a hundred dollar account. I'll have a $300 account, a thousand dollar account, a 10 grand account. And you still don't think those monetary gains are exciting to you. Then you're already in the wrong mindset. There are ways to be funded ridiculous amounts of money as long as you can prove yourself. But the reality is if you went to university to become a trader, you would have to study for three to four years. You would then have to go do a, a, an internship for two years. Then you'd have to touch demo money for a year. So that's six or seven years before you can actually even become a managed trader. What we do is we cut that learning curve. But all I need you to guys to do is understand that if you do things the right way first, you'll be in a far better position down the line. Many of us come in thinking that we're going to absolutely rocket our accounts up in the first couple of trades, and some of them might go well for you, but I promise you, the money you do not deserve from this market gets taken from you as quickly as you made it. You have to earn the right, and the best way to earn the right is understanding why you're taking the trades and setting up your risk-to-reward type profile in the correct manner. So we, as a minimum, work as one to three, but the majority of our trades are one to five, one to six, one to seven. So what does that mean? That means for every 1% of my account that I'm risking in here, I'm looking to gain 3%. The majority of the time we are looking at one to fives, one to six, one to sevens. So in one single setup that may take two days, I could make 7% of my account. And we are doing that on a regular basis. All you've got to do is flick through just some of the current trades that we've been looking at on the platform. And you can see that the stop is anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20 pips. And our targets by target three are often that one to five, one to six, one to seven type situation. You've got the order ticket to suggest that we actually have a level called out. We have targets in mind. And then this uh, little button here is also, which we can't bring out on the, on the PowerPoint, but it actually brings up the chart of our own analysis for you to go through as well. So time, and time and time again, you will see us looking at growing our percent on a compound type basis. And that's so much more important than actually over trading. Trying to trade every single day, there's not a trade every single day. You don't have to come to the market every single day. There are platforms, there are products that, that, that attempt to do that and that's fantastic, but this is a less stressful way to trade. And it's an understanding of true market conditions in which you will be able to then set, forget, and grow your money over time. All right, so on and so forth. Day in, day out, across multiple different platforms. Now we've also introduced over onto Steady A, uh, an intraday type on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We look to trade five minute timeframes for 40 to 50 to 70 pips, at a one to five, one to six, one to seven risk to reward ratio. Last week we won two out of the two days. We didn't go live Thursday, I was traveling, my friend was traveling as well but we smashed what, two one to sevens on USD CAD on a five minute time frame, played out within an hour and a half, all live on the go live system. You'll be able to find them on any of the videos that we have created in here. And therefore you could sit on there for an hour 
And even if we didn't find a trade, we only found one trade once a week on the five minute intraday stuff, then you'd be able to actually profit five, six, seven percent potentially from this market, even without having to worry about the entirety of a swing trade or a swing position. So it's very, very important that you understand all of uh, kind of the opportunities that we do provide and just the setup of how you're coming to the market. How are you defining what you're looking to do? Step one, identify where you are in the market. Are you in an uptrend? Are you in a downtrend? Are we looking to go sideways? Step two, Candlesticks, price action across multiple different timeframes can help you determine the language of the market. Step three, why is price being drawn to a certain level? And what's the understanding behind that? Well, there is money and liquidity based in certain uh, regions. And that is something that you can actually utilize for your targets. Step five, executing, uh, sorry, step four, Optimal times, London session, New York session specifically, understanding what the Asian session can do for you over the course of a day, um, and then your risk reward profiling. That is a complete understanding right there. Now, like I mentioned, we go through multiple different um, elements to actually even to do what we do. Don't be overruled by any of it. I've tried to explain it as best as I could in 30 to 40 minutes. It's something that I've been doing for nine years now across multiple different uh, industries, different uh, institutions and different places. So thank you very much for having me on. For any of you new guys, welcome. I look forward to hopefully seeing you over on Steady. For any of you guys that have been in the business for a while and have not been put on, um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you Monday all the way till Thursday over on Steady if that's something that you would like to do for yourself. So Junior, thanks for having me on. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, who's got the bet for PSG tonight? Woo! It's a big one, bro. It's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> it's a huge one, man. And, uh, you know, we'll put some pips on that, on, on, on that bet there. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, John. Bro, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for all that you're doing for the team. Thank you for all that you're doing for the, for, for the organization. We appreciate you, bro. And uh, we're excited. Now we've got some real. I've got a page full of notes right here. I'm gonna implement that on my charts today and tomorrow, moving forward into the week. So I'm excited, guys. And put some seven, seven, sevens just to show some gratitude for our brother here. He really has, uh, you know, given us um, a tremendous amount of value. Put some seven, seven, sevens in the chat box, guys. I am excited. I am so excited for this week for the setups, for the trades, using the products and services. Make sure you utilize them if you're in the company. If you're not in the company yet, guys, and if you're a guest, make sure you get started so we can give you guys the training on how to actually use the products and services with the I Am Academy. But guys, uh, we are excited. Thank you for coming to the call. We're going to end it here. If you're a guest, uh, please go back to the person that invited you, and they're going to get you started, and they're going to show you how to start your account and how to get trading with the I Am Academy. Any questions that you may have, go back to the person that invited you uh, and they will answer your questions for you. And I look forward to seeing you at the beaches and most certainly the banks. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you next week Sunday. Bye-bye.